no regrets. Uh, especially whenever the customer after eating, uh, they tell you, hey, the laksa is really good. You must continue this recipe. You really feel good about it. Reach the 100-year mark and continue maybe to the fourth generation. I'm Jamie. Okay, I'm 48. I sell laksa together with my two younger sisters in charge of five outlets. Jungle laksa started in 1940 plus, let's say 1950 lah, okay. It started with two brothers, Ng brothers, and one of the elder Ng brothers married a Parangkan lady, a Noya lady, and that is how we get to know how to cook Parangkan Noya laksa. And because in the 50s, there's no Zhao Pai, no signboard. So this uncle, the brother, there's a mole here under his chin. They call it Gorka Chiu. In Malay, means beard. That's why everybody call him Uncle Jungle. And that is how we get the name Jungle Laksa. La. We used to call it Marine Parade Katong Laksa. But everybody start opening the same, like us, cut the noodle short, follow us. So that's why we changed it to our founder's name, Jungle Laksa. That is around 1940 plus, around the East Coast area. La. The Marine Parade East Coast Beach area. Yeah, we started from there. The very first store, uh, the shop is in 1950 plus, I think around 1963. It's at 49th East Coast Road. That is our very first shop there. It's at the Ting Pioka. That is where all the uncle aunties remember us selling there, using charcoal and really using the coconut husk. That is our very, very first store. Then after that, because our renters go up, we shift to number 57. Then after that, to Roxy Square. And now it's in Roxy Square. One of the best. Uh, I don't know whether best or not, but I know every time when they eat, they finish everything. Lah. The whole bowl really, even the last scoop of gravy. The recipe is everything the same. The only two difference is that we cannot use charcoal anymore and the coconut, we cannot squeeze it. So we maintain the recipe as long as we can. Everything the same. So I think that is why people feel that when they eat jungle laksa, they feel very hearty, comfortable because it's like the old style of laksa. Lah. We don't really do any marketing. It's normally through word of mouth, referral. So, you know, people eat, they're ready, they come back. So as long as people come back again and again, I think we feel good, of course. We will continue the recipe. We do not change anything and continue as it is for as long as we can and hopefully reach a 100-year mark soon. We are now already 70 over. We are using Sua Lo He. Every hawker right now, they change our restaurant, they change to frozen prawn, but we insist on maintaining the quality. So to use the best ingredient and yet cannot sell high at Singapore is very difficult because of the high cost of living, the rental, the staff cost. So this is the most challenging part and also engaging good staff because in F&B, it's not easy to get staff to work long hours. As a hawker, it's really very tough, very long hour. You have to wake up early, cooking orders, standing orders is not easy and the heat when you do the cooking. Very early, 5 plus, they have to go to the main kitchen, cook the gravy, the laksa, I need a few hours to cook. Then we prepare all the ingredients, our prawns are freshly peeled, orders, fish cake also cut, everything prepared. Then we get all the ingredients and the gravy ready, then our driver will deliver to five outlets. And that's when I come to the outlet here and start selling like that. Most rewarding part of this business is when you see your customer enjoy the bowl laksa, come over and say, hey, good laksa, nice, thank you. When I'm working in Queensway, I will see those customers come. Uh. I heard from my mom, uh, they come during Pato days. Then they get married, they bring their children here and eat again. We feel good long in the sense they come back again and visit us like friend already. Growing up days is when wherever we are free, we help out in the laksa shop, crunching noodles, a few bowls like that. Long. When you see your mom getting old, so that's why we three sisters come out to help. But we know this recipe is something that is worthwhile continuing. So we have to each sacrifice our time a bit to join this business. Long. It's not easy, but we are trying our best to maintain as much and go as long as we can. I wish to continue to do this for long, to serve this bowl of laksa. Now at the moment is that we continue serving this bowl, then I mean my son, my children, they did come and help on and off, but who knows? That depends on whether they want or not, because being in F&B is really not easy. It will be nice that we continue this so-called heritage food.